Welcome back. Outed. Chapter 3. Mitch. I rode my board back to Harding's health food, locked the board and helmet up in my truck, and went back to work. I should have told Jared everything. It hurt hiding and lying and pretending all the time. For a moment, I almost did, until the crack about the condom and the girl. Like a mindless zombie, I shelled canned tomatoes, fetched carts, helped a customer find organic bug spray, cleaned up a spilled soy yogurt, shelled all-natural soda, and then mopped up a broken bottle of all-natural soda that a customer dropped, brought in produce, and then it was quitting time. I had no clothes with me except for what I wore, and the emergency ones in the backpack. How could I impose on Jared again, or his mom? She was on disability, but I didn't want to see Donna and Bailey again. However, I knew Donna and Bailey's work schedules. I could sneak in when they weren't home and maybe take care of some things. The Tri-Region Tournament was day after tomorrow. I could wait for the right time and get the rest of my karate gear, then sleep in my truck for the next couple of days. My phone beeped. The Amazon package was on the way. Expected delivery in five days. Sunday. The special package. The one I had plans for. That was the day I would tell Jared the truth. No more lying and no more hiding. One little package would change everything. Technically, it's what was in it that mattered. A black baseball hat with the word pride embroidered on it in rainbow colors. I'd take Jared out to the rest area with the g skyer Weather reports said it would be a clear and cloudless night, which was perfect for kicking back and watching the stars. Sunday night, the Perseid meteor shower peaked, and we would watch for hours, like we did every year. After I worked up the courage, I would put on the hat backwards and turn it around. Jared would see it, be surprised. We would hug and cry, and he would say thanks for trusting him, and I would hold him, and we would cry some more, and I'd never have to lie to my best friend again. Jared would know that I was gay, and still be my best friend. Maybe I could tell Jared how much I loved him. It would be just like the YouTube videos, and we could lay back in the truck and talk for days. Happy ending. Bailey was wrong. People wouldn't hate me. Jared wouldn't hate me. But I had a busy weekend. The karate tournament was on Saturday, Amazon delivery on Sunday, and then talk to Jared Sunday night. Today was Tuesday, and it promised to be an excellent weekend. The alarm beeped on my phone. Time to check blood sugar. I pulled up a seat in the break room, pulled my backpack on the table, and pulled out my kitten journal. Maybe I should get another protein bar, just in case, and stash it with my clothes. Prime the lancet, put the test strip in the meter, prick. Mrs. Harding walked in and took a chair opposite me at the table. She waited for me to finish. Normal? For me, what's up? That's a first. Somebody asked me if I was normal. Do you have something happening Sunday morning? I opened my journal and logged the results. Later that day... One of the stalkers needs the day off. You up? Sure. I'll log you down for 8 to noon. I nodded as I put the glucose meter and journal away, and she walked out of the room. A minute later, I climbed into my truck and went to the monster house. The Maserati and the Beamer did not litter the driveway. I had some time to get my sparing pad, sparring pads and change into my gi before my parents got home. Then off to the dojo. I had to get ready for Saturday best laid plans. I pulled the ugly truck to the curb, left my pack in the front seat, and ran to the house. The coast was clear. Once inside, I stripped as I ran to my room and pulled on a Megadeth t-shirt and my gi. As I grabbed my sparring pads, I heard a car pull into the driveway. I glanced out the window. The Maserati. Donna's car. Shit. I was decent enough. I'll finish dressing at the dojo. She came in the back. I left out the front, but not fast enough. Get back here. I want to talk to you. I turned to look at her, but didn't move. In high school, I developed a mask to hide the pain I felt inside. 
The kids thought me cold and emotionless because I refused to show any kind of emotion. It was my go-to reaction for everything. Like now. My face was a stone statue, but inside I wanted to run from her as fast as I could. Donna stood at the door, blonde extensions waving in the breeze, and held her keys in a death grip. I have some clients coming over tonight, and it would be nice for you to dress up. None of that black slashed crap. I rolled my eyes and headed to the truck. I'm talking to you, young man. Where do you think you are going? The dojo. I'm getting ready for a tournament on Saturday. Do you want to come see me compete? Don Donna hadn't any of the other times, so why would now be different? You can be so stubborn and pig-headed sometimes. I remain quiet. You leave and don't come home for days. You barely live here, and when you are here, it's one fight after the other. I gave Donna a slight smile. I don't start the fights. I keep my mouth shut most of the time. You and Bailey do all the screaming. I stand against the wall and pretend I'm a door. You are impossible. Donna put her keys away and stepped between the columns on the porch. Probably. But how many times has Bailey hit you? How many times have you gone to instant care with this skateboarding injury? He was only trying to beat the gay out of me. Keep your voice down. This was going nowhere. I turned and headed for my truck. Donna was on one that day because she marched after me. Get back here. I am not done talking to you. You mean screaming. I held up seven fingers as I faced her. Seven. What are you talking about? Seven skateboard accidents that required instant care. Bailey is a monster. He's a good man. Who beats up his son? I said, making my voice as calm as possible. When I move out, I'm never coming back here again and I hope I never see you and Bailey ever again. It's your fault because you choose to be... Donna couldn't finish the sentence. You can't even say the word. You know how your dad is, and it wouldn't have hurt you to be what he wants you to be. I put the pads in the back of the truck. You and Bailey don't accept me, and never have. That's because you are an embarrassment. Can't you dress nice, drive a nice car, or even cut your hair? Date somebody nice? Look at where you work. It's a grocery store. And the way you act, everybody thinks I'm a failure because of you. It's all about you, I said. Goodbye, Donna. I'm going to be late. As I drove off, Donna got on her phone and made a call. If it was to my phone, I wouldn't get it. I blocked her a long time ago. If I timed things right, I would never have to see them again. I own the truck and could sleep anywhere. At the dojo, it took a half an hour with the therapist before I calmed down. The therapist is the name Sensei Robert gave the punching bag. An ex-Marine, Sensei Robert is a serious competitor in the weightlifting world and a second degree black belt. His dojo is the Open Palm School of Karate, which is in a strip mall about five minutes from the Monster House. My only claim to fame is mastering the katas, or the sequence of organized karate moves. I'm no good at sparring. I usually lose, but I have the forms down. I'm the only green belt Sensei Robert trusts to teach the forms right because I am constantly practicing them. I train the white belts on Saturday mornings and help them in open practice on Sunday mornings. Someday I'll get good at sparring and if Bailey ever tried to hit me again, I'd throw him on his butt. When I get to be a black belt, I wouldn't have to be afraid again. Me and the therapist have become friends. I can work my anger and frustration out on him without worrying about hurting anyone. I'm practicing my kicks when Z walked in. He's younger, Hispanic, and is more coordinated than I was when I started. He held the bag for me as I kicked. I hold it for him as he practiced his punches. When karate is over, I shower and change, then park at the diner and sleep in my truck. Wednesday, three days before the apocalypse. Jared. First day off in six days. I rolled onto my back and placed my hands behind my head. My mom's TV was on in the other room and the scents of fried bacon and fresh coffee filled the air. I inhaled deeply. This was a morning worth getting up for. No hangover this morning. No Mitch either. Mitch hadn't come over yesterday. Mom had made some keto spaghetti as well. Mitch's reply to the text, I can't leech off you guys all the time. Mom didn't care. I didn't mind most of the time. In fact, I kind of liked it. Just like high school, Mitch withdrew from the world when things got rough. Instead of yelling or screaming or fighting, 
He faded away for a while and wouldn't let anybody help him. My best friend. Mitch would go out of his way to help anyone, but had to do everything on his own. But he had lats and arms I wish I had. The girls would definitely fall for, fall for those. I jumped into shorts and a t-shirt and walked to the kitchen. Morning, Mom, I said as I passed the living room. Just a second, Mom said into her phone. Bacon, eggs, and coffee are in the kitchen. Filling a plate, I walked out to the backyard and sat on the stairs. The place was a dump. My father had left a lot of junk when he moved out five years ago, so much that it covered most of the ground, except where Mitch had cleared his space to practice. Some jobs are just too big to even start. Unless I asked Mitch for help. It might even be a little bit of fun, and maybe Mitch would open up a little. Whenever he needed help, Mitch was always there and Mom had a lot of that spaghetti sauce left over. I pulled out my phone and sent a text. You got time for you and your truck to help me with the project today? A minute later. Sure, what's up? I smiled. Worked every time. I sent him a frowning emoji. Backyard. Crying emoji. On your day off, too. Be there by three. What to do until then? Shopping. That men's store in the mall was having a sale. It couldn't hurt to check it, check on it. But if they had a decent deal, and I looked good in something, I deserved a splurge. Mitch. Two o'clock. Testing time again. And after this, off to help Jared. Their backyard was more than a mess. More like a scrapyard of rotting appliances and old cars. Definitely not a one-man job, or a one-day job. Maybe not even a one-lifetime job. A couple of my co-workers watched as I tested. One repressed a shudder. I could never do that. Does it hurt? I shrugged. You get used to it. The results came back. 173. I've been running high all week. Most people stay in the 80s or 90s. It's a good day if I can stay below 110. This week, I can't even get close. I wonder if the stress of Donna and Bailey or the excitement of the tournament can affect glucose. I packed the kid away and closed the backpack. Do you have to do that every day? Four times. One of them was eating a Danish, and they took a second look at it. See you tomorrow, I said. I drove to Donna and Bailey's monster house. No Beam or X6, no Maserati Ghibli either. They weren't home. Letting myself in, I shivered. As always, the thermostat was set to 67. Someone could get frostbite in here. I walked through the mudroom and into the kitchen slash dining room. Noemi, Donna's maid, had set the place settings on the counter and was polishing Donna's prize glass dining room table. Hey, Noemi. Noemi knew her stuff. She had taught me how to do laundry and better ways to clean. Even a little technique with vinegar to make the G-Skyer shine like it had just come out of the box. She leaned the vacuum against the wall. Your father is furious with you. She had the nicest accent. And that's new? You were supposed to come home last night. I don't know why. Didn't you get the texts? Nope. I opened the fridge to see what was to eat. No, Amy. Why is my insulin all the way in the back? She leaned over me. I did not do that. After you explained about it, I always made sure it is in the front. I reached in and grabbed the four vials. The little note I had tied to them was legible. Explained where the vials needed to be. But Donna and Bailey had proved they didn't care. Again. Two vials were frozen. It's not your fault, Noemi. There goes that prescription. Could I make two vials last until the next prescription? Maybe Dr. Swoda had samples. Was it the third time or the fourth that this had happened? I left the two frozen vials in the fridge, along with one good one, and took the other one with me. Back in my spotless room, I dared to sit on the bed and leave a wrinkle. Donna would be pissed. Every room had to be magazine cover ready. Bailey worked in real estate, and Donna was an interior decorator. They brought people over all the time to show off the house. The monster house wasn't a house made to live in, but one to show off. Donna changed decorations monthly, sometimes weekly. Sometimes I would come home to find my entire room rearranged, or some new designer comforter on the bed, or, you wouldn't mind sleeping on the couch, we have to test out the new color and the painters think it will take three days to get it painted, or, we put your clothes in that box over there so we could make over your closet the way it should look. You don't mind, do you? 
or the way Bailey searched through my things to make sure I didn't have anything that looked gay. If he found something, anything, he'd yell, hit me, and tell me how ashamed he was. The room was Donna's current style. Everything I owned had been hidden in the closet. I checked on the G-Skyer. The telescope was packed and ready for this weekend. Jared had come with me almost every month since I had bought it. Michaela and Joshua a couple of times. My parents, zero. I had invited them, but every time Donna had some presentation she had to work on and Bailey always said no. No excuse, just no. At least Donna had been a little bit polite by coming up with an excuse. Maybe Bailey had an affair on the side, preferred someone else to Donna, and he took out his frustrations on his son. Not likely. Who would put up with him? Maybe Bailey had trouble getting it up and had to compensate by being angry all the time. I smiled. Bailey having a little problem. Jared would laugh if he ever knew how bad it got sometimes. Nobody knew. Not Jared, not Michaela, not Joshua, not Sensei Robert, nobody. Nobody would believe me if I said anything anyway. Whatever the reason, it didn't excuse Bailey's moods. I ran a hand along the telescope. I should have never paid off the truck so fast. I could have waited a few months and been able to move out. But no, I had to be debt free as soon as I could. Grabbing some clothes and waving at Noemi, I ran out to my truck. Better not let Bailey see that I parked in the driveway. At least I had escaped. A few minutes later, I drove up to the Parker house, helped Mrs. Jackson with her groceries, how does she eat so much, and knocked on the Parker door. Hey, Mitch, get your skinny butt in here. Mrs. Parker turned down the volume on the TV and levered herself off her chair. The TV showed a weather girl explaining about the low pressure area moving toward the butte. Are you hungry? The swamp cooler thundered away. The small house was still a little warm, but better than the deep freeze at the monster house. Maybe later. Can I ask a favor? Sure, as long as it's not money. Can I store some insulin here? It keeps getting pushed to the back of the fridge at Donna and Bailey's and freezes. I pulled the tie out of my hair, finger combed my hair, and tied it back. Frozen insulin doesn't work very well. Hell, here I thought you were going to ask something hard. Put in the door by the butter. It should be safe. I walked into the kitchen, opened the very cluttered fridge, found the butter in the door, and set the insulin by it. Do you mind if I have one of those cookies you made the other day? Help yourself. Jared's out back. I grabbed a cookie and headed to the back door and opened it. Jared was out there, shirtless. I stopped breathing. My heart beat a little faster. I held the door a second too long. You don't have to hide. Mrs. Parker had figured out my secret when me and Jared were back in high school. Eight people knew my secret, and they kept it. Only two kept it because if the neighbors knew they had a gay son, they, didn't be they believed it would shame the family. Life's easier that way. Mrs. Parker lumbered over and stood next to me. You need to tell him. I have the same problem as the insulin. We freeze. Just don't wait too long. She grabbed a giant chocolatey oozy brownie thing from the fridge and trundled to the living room. I joined Jared in the back. Why did I feel like my shirt wasn't long enough?